Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of BD Marks Weather. It's great to have you on the channel today. We're going to be watching a few areas. We have Lorenzo out here spinning in the open Atlantic. Over the next several days, we're going to be watching that kind of fizzle out. But the big story is going to be some tropical wave action we're going to be watching over the next several days, kicking up around Trinidad, Tobago, the southern Lesser Antilles. We're going to watch this head westward as long as other tropical waves as well in the Caribbean. Things could be getting a little active down here. And we'll look at the rest of your weather. Let's get into it. And here we go with the infrared satellite view. Look at this explosion of showers and thunderstorms right around the center here of Lorenzo. Trying to hold on here. It's a minimal tropical storm. Look at this out here. This is kind of crazy. That's a strong tropical wave we'll be watching. Also, Grenada, Barbados area, showers and thunderstorms all the way over to Jamaica, the Cayman Islands. Watch out. And the Bahamas. So here we are with the GFS model. Then I'll show you the European model in a couple minutes here. We have Lorenzo just spinning about out here. I showed you the infrared satellite photo. It's not going to be much of anything. That, that is the good news. Now, our attention is ultimately going to turn. Obviously, we had this big low causing all sorts of problems along the East Coast over the last several days. We're going to turn our attention, if you can believe it, out into the intertropical convergence zone here. Look at this, 16th, 17th, 18th. We have a strong tropical wave trying to develop here. And the first wave of it right around Grenada, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados area, and there's a couple more waves of it here that's going to propagate. We also have a strong area of low pressure right across South Florida towards the 20th. So here we go. This is going to be the area the GFS has been picking up, and we'll also see if the Europeans picking up on it as well. We have two areas of concern here as we head on into the 20th, 21st, and the 22nd. This is where we start to get increased moisture. Two potential areas of low pressure coming out of these two tropical waves. This is pretty interesting. And another tropical wave trying to develop here southeast of Trinidad, Tobago. This is something we'll keep a very close watch on. During this whole time, though, it's kind of quiet up here in the northern and northeastern Caribbean islands. Look at this. This does not look like late October, but you get the idea here. The GFS, obviously... We know the last couple of days has been trying to develop a tropical storm or even a hurricane just south of Jamaica here. And look at this big mess. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Not to say, you know, take this with a grain of salt because we'll watch this. It's possible something could develop, but the GFS is going crazy with a major hurricane here into the Western Caribbean. You know, things have happened this time of year, so I don't want to discount this, but you know, it, this could be the GFS doing its GFS things, but we'll watch it here because it does bear watching, you know, having a positive uh, signal like this. This is, this is going crazy here by the 29th, but as I said, take this with a grain of salt. Look how far out this is. This next storm kind of recurving out into the open Atlantic. And this is really crazy if you think about it because then this starts to merge. This almost looks like reminiscent of a Sandy type storm look at this kind of merging with a big trough to the northwest here this is something we'll keep a very close watch on all right so here's the european model i'll show you the zoomed out across the pretty much the entire atlantic lorenzo being pretty much absorbed up here into the west release as high pressure builds in behind it but this this looks so strange out here intertropical convergence zone in mid mid to late october this is crazy october 18th here it is on the euro as well as it approaches the lesser antilles i'll show you this zoomed in momentarily but i just wanted to give you the big picture look at this as it kicks across parts of the eastern caribbean strong tropical wave developing into an area of low pressure we now have confirmation from the euro so it's still a bit far out so that's the thing we need to put the brakes on a little bit but the fact that we're seeing this positive signal from both the gfs and the european model is a bit concerning so here it is on the 18 you know th this run of the 12z uh we'll get confirmation from the 18z but there it is as we continue to go from, to, uh, you know, through the Yucatan Peninsula here, a landfalling tropical storm emerging into the southern Gulf here into the Bay of Campeche. So there you have it. All right. So zooming in here, we'll take a look, see what we got going on across the Caribbean. We do have a lot of moisture even later this week. Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Northeast Caribbean Islands through Jamaica here. Watch out. We have some strong tropical wave action here. I don't think this one will develop into anything. But you get the idea here. We got some, look at this big strong weight, uh, low pressure out here east of Bermuda. That's what that 
weekend coastal along the U.S. East Coast, but this is what we're going to be watching. We're also watching this. We'll get through the weekend. Jamaica getting some heavy rain, gusty winds. Also, the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad, Tobago up to St. Vincent. Please watch out. This could develop into something. It's possible. Now that both models are kind of on board with this. Through the 22nd, you see it's approaching Jamaica. Just moving just south of Haiti here. Closing off an area of low pressure. Definitely think the Euro is a bit more realistic here than the GFS blasting this up into a super major hurricane. So it is quite possible this could end up being more of the solution. But it's still far out, so please stay tuned. But this would be devastating for Honduras if this holds true. Also, very heavy rain all the way back to Jamaica. You still see these feeder bands on the east side. This is a very large circulation, so it's one we're going to have to keep a very close watch on. There it is, making landfall around Belize right around the 27th and just moving across the Mexican area of the Yucatan Peninsula here before reemerging into the Bay of Campeche here. So definitely watch out. Sea surface temperature anomalies. The Caribbean and Gulf is still on fire, although at this point, I think it's just the Caribbean and the Western MDR in play here. And here we are across the Western Caribbean. Look at this. Yeah, as we get into later week, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, you're picking up about 45, 60 millimeters, but look at next week. Yeah, European kind of going crazy with the moisture, just like the GFS. Look at this. Some areas of Eastern Jamaica, upwards of two, 250 millimeters. Just tremendous rain here. Look at northern Honduras. 438, 346 in southern Belize. That's some tremendous rainfall. Dominican Republic, a little bit less. 60 to about 110 millimeters. Puerto Rico, you're looking at right around two and a half, three inches, along with St. Croix, closer to four inches. And look at the Western Caribbean here. This is what we got going. So as we go through time, ultimately, you can see what's happening with the moisture. Jamaica. Dominican Republic, there it is. So yeah, GFS going, wow, look at that. So if this verifies, this would be devastating. Six, seven, eight, nine hundred millimeters. You know, you're talking one to two feet of rain at that point. Southern Haiti here as well. Some of these areas would be devastated. So we'll keep an eye on it here. Let's not read too much into it at this point, but the fact that we're seeing positive, uh, some positive, uh, Signals going on between the GFS and the Euro, that is a bit concerning. And here we are across the Eastern Caribbean. Look at this. Yeah, so we're seeing some surging moisture from the Northeast here, Northeast Caribbean Islands over the weekend. So you'll get to pick up some shower action. And then as we get through, yeah, look at this. Tropical wave action through the end of the month. Most areas eclipsing 100 millimeters. Some areas approaching 170 millimeters here in parts of the Lesser Antilles. As we look at the Eastern Caribbean here, this is what we got going on. Lesser Antilles, Northeast Caribbean Islands, Trinidad, Tobago. That's going to be the winner here on the GFS model with that big tropical wave. Uh, Puerto Rico, parts of Puerto Rico, two to four inches of rain. St. Croix as well. Look at the Lesser Antilles here, just like on the European model. You got a bullseye right around Trinidad, Tobago with that strong tropical wave next week. We could be looking at totals close to 150, 200 millimeters. And looking at our ARRR future radar here as we go through time. If we can kick this across here. Yeah, as we go into the overnight, the rainfall is going to be on the increase here through parts of northeastern Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania, western New York. We may have some showers kicking up here, but that'll be a fading memory by noon on Wednesday already. So look at this across the east. High pressure really dominant in control. All the strong to severe weather will be here into the northern plains. And a little bit of a backlash of this trough from our coastal low over the weekend. Kind of kicking up some shower action. And picking up where our feature radar left off here. Thankfully, that low pressure along the east coast is pulling away. High pressure is building in. There's another low that's trying to develop out here, but it doesn't seem to cause any problems. Now, here is the thing. I know many of you in the Ohio Valley have been complaining about the drought rightfully so looks like we're going to get some moisture here from the gulf it's going to bring up some beneficial rain here towards ohio right around the 19th and 20th look at this pushing into the northeast into western new york western pennsylvania and then eventually pushing into eastern new york and parts of new england as we head towards the 20th so there you have it 
That's what we're going to be looking at. That's the main storm system. And then another big storm winds up here across the upper Midwest and eventually pinwheels into the eastern Great Lakes here. Another big surge of moisture here across western Texas. We'll keep an eye on it here because it could promote some severe weather uh, by the late part of the month here towards the 24th and 25th. But high pressure really in control across the east until look at that. Well, yeah, we'll keep an eye on this potential tropical anomaly down here we'll call it right now but here it is cold front moving east towards ohio yeah we'll see if this meets up with any moisture you know this this would all be dependent on what happens with the tropics but this is so far out october 30th all right so the european model here picking up where our future radar left off actually we are going to go nationally here instead of just the whole continent of north america here we go high pressure kicking in here just like on the gfs and you can see just like on the GFS, towards the 19th into the 20th, we do get some beneficial rain here in the parts of Ohio, southeast Michigan, all the way to the Gulf Coast here. Strong thunderstorms potentially, and we may actually have an area of low pressure that tries to form here, which would be some good news. It'll bring some beneficial rain, but look at the east coast towards Monday the 20th. Yeah, getting into some stronger showers and thunderstorms here as this tries to go into a coastal low type thing and then up through the lakes in the northeast we do have another area of low pressure kicking across and then look at this by friday october 24th another area of low pressure kicking across the southeast and we get into some low pressure up here but you get the idea very fast moving flow towards the 28th 29th we get this high pressure off the east coast and another strong low up here towards parts of wisconsin and michigan and here we go with liquid equivalent precipitation amounts here yeah all the way through the weekend not much but then we get to next week look at the ohio valley half to three quarters of an inch close to an inch or inch and a half in some locations and these coastal lows up here in the northeast may spread some very very big amounts of moisture as well so you know in this red two two and a half inches not out of the question all right looking at our gfs rainfall amounts here this is what we're looking at across the east so you 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 get the idea here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Look at look at New England there with those coastal storms. Even Florida here, we're bubbling up. Some areas close to two to three inches. Look at the Carolinas here. There's kind of a rain hole through the end of the month. But look it up here in Maine. That's if this major coastal combines with like tropical moisture. Not buying too much into that at this point, but widespread two to three inch amounts look like a good bet. Look at through the Ohio Valley here. Some areas approaching an inch or two. And before we continue with more weather coverage, don't forget, smash that like button, everyone. It really does help. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments and respond to them. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, bell notification button so you're alerted with all my future weather video updates. I'm diligently trying to get my winter 2025-26 outlook out, so be sure to look for that. Let's continue. Looking at our NAO index here, we are going very stormy, very negative late month here. Watch out for blocking pattern and big storms. Looking at our MD MJO index here. Yeah, so we're right around this area, right around two. And, you know, the trends are eventually towards one, but eventually later on into November towards four and five. We'll see. Looking at our upper air pattern here. This is what we got going on on the Euro, that big tropical. I shouldn't say tropical, this big trough off the East Coast. Yeah, it's got some tropical moisture on the southern end of it. That's drawing a lot north. Another trough kicking in late weekend into early monday of next week kind of kicking off the east coast here so yeah ridge to the north kind of blocking so we're getting some blocking going on typical winter time pattern and these it's going to send impulses of these low pressures around it you see one right after another through the end of the month there's uh potential with uh maybe a tropical system here we'll keep an eye on it and looking across the western pacific here look at typhoon nakari here moving off to the east of Japan blasting out here into the North Pacific. As we go through time, the Philippines through Vietnam, South China looks very, very quiet. Until about the 18th and 19th, we do get this storm trying to develop. We may have another typhoon on our hands just east of Taiwan as we get towards uh, the 20th here. Looking up towards South Korea, Shanghai, very dry here. Japan, we are getting some heavy you know, moisture here from this uh, synoptic front that's kind of stalled out. And it looks like that front kind of pushes the system more to the south and west towards uh, Taiwan here. And then the moisture moves up over the northern Pacific. So yeah, th this trough really protecting Japan. Only rain we're going to get is with that frontal boundary. 
And look at the rainfall amounts here across the Western Pacific as we put this into motion. Yeah, look at that up towards uh, South Korea and Japan later this week into the weekend and then towards Taiwan as we get into our potential tropical systems. Yeah, some areas around Taiwan upwards of six, 700 millimeters. Southern Japanese islands towards three, four, 500 millimeters. Up here, this is all synoptic. So, you know, anywhere from about 150, 160 millimeters in some of these orange and red areas. Look at Seoul, South Korea there. Yeah, barely 39 millimeters, quarter to half an inch of rain. All right, so looking at our Canadian weather outlook here, high pressure is in control. Big uh, Pacific systems just blasting into British Columbia here. Manitoba as well, this low pressure really winding up here across parts of Hudson Bay. Now look at this. Yeah, you, you can see what's going on here. Pacific systems, this is looking reminiscent of wintertime. This low just kind of gets hung up here, dragging some cold fronts across southern Ontario here. So there you have it into Quebec towards the 20th, the 21st. New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, you're really getting none on this coastal low by the 22nd into the 23rd. Storminess moving into southern Ontario and Quebec and British Columbia as well. You can see what's happening as we continue to go through time here. So very fast moving weather flow. Another Pacific system blasting into British Columbia towards the 25th and the 26th. This low wrapping up towards the Canadian Maritimes. Pretty dry here in the prairies come late month, though. We do get some rain, thankfully, in Alberta. Maybe some wet snowflakes in the higher elevations. And another Pacific system. All this here in southern Ontario and Quebec will hinge on the tropics. And here we are with rainfall mounts across Canada. Look at this. Yeah, West Coast, that's where you're going to see the two, three, four hundred 400 millimeters in some locations. The prairies, a little bit less. Eastern Canada, a little bit more here, 60, 80 millimeters in many of these red areas. Look at the West Coast, though. This is where you're going to get the massive Pacific storms. And here we are looking at our temperatures. Yeah, we have a shot of cooler air. 50s up here into northern New England and the northeast. Look at the temperature disparity here. You know there's going to be some, you know, action in between here. But there it is, 80s along the Gulf Coast, 50s up here into the northeast. That is pretty average for this time of year. As we get into Friday, just looking nice and fall-like up here. Get out and enjoy the fall foliage. 80s all the way up just west of Chicago here. As we stretch through Saturday, October 18th here, holding on to 60s, but watch these 70s. Look at that. Cleveland, 74, 76 in Pittsburgh, 73 in Chicago here, and even into the Carolinas as we head on into Saturday. Into Sunday, October 19th, look at this. Yeah, 50s across the lakes into the northeast. We got some 60s and some 70s up here into the parts northeast. And then as we head on into Monday, October 20th here, yeah, Shot of cooler air, but this is pretty average for this time of year. Extended forecast from our hometown doers, being into this Grand Super Susquehanna River Valley, New York, and Pennsylvania. As we get through the rest of the week here, all through this week, we are looking not too bad here. Actually, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday time frame looks mostly sunny. If you have those days off, very nice to get out there and enjoy the fall foliage. It will be a bit windy on Wednesday, unfortunately, though. Wind gusts up to 25 miles an hour. Uh, but it is looking really nice, upper 50s, near 60s, so get out there and enjoy. Into Saturday, we'll be pushing the lower 70s, which is beautiful. The rain does start to move in just a tad on Sunday with the next front. Plenty more weather to come. Here is a look at my affiliate. Check out these awesome, amazing maps. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, thank you for joining me for this edition of MediaMark's Weather. Also, don't forget to join me on Facebook at MediaMark, also Weather Northeastern, also Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget it's MediaMark.com. And don't forget, if you want to send me a coffee, there is a link, Super Thanks. You can smash that Super Thanks button or my PayPal link in the description down below. You can buy me a cup of coffee. Thanks, everyone. Share that video. Subscribe if you haven't. Smash that like button.